Um, good afternoon, um, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to our webinar, Analyze Companies Using Financial Ratios, brought to you by the R Consortium. The R Consortium works with and supports key organizations developing R software through grants and sponsorships worldwide. Please visit our website to learn all the details and how your organization can become a member. My name is Elenia Quintero, and I'm today's announcers. And I just have a few housekeeping items before we begin today. This webinar will be an interactive Q&A section between you and our presenter. Just type in a question into the questions window at any point during the presentation and make sure to click the submit button. Near the end of the webinar, we'll try to answer as many questions as time allows. Okay, let's get started. Again, this webinar focuses on analyze companies using financial ratios. Christoph is an independent data science business intelligence expert. He co-created and maintains the Tidy Finance Project, a transparent open source approach to research in financial economics. Christoph, thank you so much. Um, can you go ahead and begin your presentation? All right, perfect. Thank you, Linia, for the introduction. And thank you again for, thanks again to the R Consortium for having us. So this webinar is the third installment of a series of four. And just a brief recap. So in the first two webinars, we have talked about uh, stock return data and how you can use it to optimize portfolios, in particular by applying the Markowitz uh, minimum variance framework. And in the second webinar, we talked about performance evaluation of assets using the capital asset pricing model. And both of these webinars relied on uh, stock return data that we downloaded using the Tidy Finance package. And in this webinar, we will introduce uh, company financial statements. Uh, in the particular, we will calculate a couple of financial ratios and discuss how this relates uh, to other topics in finance. Now, financial statements are essential because they serve as a standardized source of information and it provides a consistent framework that enables investors, creditors, and analysts to assess a company's financial health uh, and performance. And in fact, all companies are legally required to file financial statements, uh, in particular uh, publicly traded companies. Um, this adds a layer of accountability and reliability uh, um, to the information that they have to disclose. And these the public companies in particular, they have to be independently audited uh, by uh, companies to ensure the accuracy and integrity of these uh, reports. And in the US in particular, uh, these public companies are required by the security exchange uh, uh, and Exchange Commission, or SEC, to file their financial statements quarterly and annually. And this, this, this makes sure that yeah, the investors and the analysts have timely information uh, to, to make informed investment decisions and evaluate companies throughout the year. And financial ratios, and I will show you a couple of them uh, during this webinar, they are a very useful tool for understanding a company's financial health and performance. So you can use them to compare uh, companies to each other. So to use this as some sort of benchmarking tools, um, you can always compare it to the peers in the same industry, for instance. Uh, another thing you can do with financial ratios is trend analysis. So you can evaluate the company's ratios over multiple periods. Uh, and look for, for patterns. So not just to uh, a, co a comparison across uh, companies, but also uh, across time. Sometimes ratios are also used to um, improve the portfolio selection. Um, for instance, so you can use financial ratios to screen and select high quality firms and then do portfolio optimization based on this uh, subset of firms rather than looking at the whole universe of, of firms. And sometimes some sort of financial ratios also used uh, in asset pricing models. Um, we will also look at an example later. Um, so factor models 
also calculate some uh, ratios based on uh, this uh, accounting data. And last but not least, in speaking of uh, so capital structure research and risk management more generally also uses accounting information and calculates some sort of uh, financial uh, measures. And they are used to assess the risk profiles and potentially discovering firms that are uh, uh, in uh, firms that are uh, at, at risk of financial distress. So it's a good building block to get a, an idea about what information companies file and how you can use it to uh, look at to assess companies' health. So what we will do in this webinar now is first I will illustrate uh, what the different types of financial statements look like, show a couple of examples, uh, of course, also provide code how to download financial data in R, and then we will calculate ratios and do different types of comparisons across companies and over time. And towards the end of the presentation, I will pick up a topic that we also raised in the CAPM webinar last time, uh, namely the pharma French factors and how firm characteristics and financial statements play a role there. Let's start with the balance sheet. The balance sheet provides a snapshot of a company's financial standing at a specific point in time. So already mentioned that filings are on a quarterly or annual basis. And at this specific point in time, the balance sheet shows the company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity uh, according to this fundamental accounting equation, namely that assets are equal to the sum of liabilities and shareholders' equity. So what are the assets? They are on a high level resources owned by the company that are expected to provide future economic benefits. So we'll dig down deeper what these uh, um, individual constituents of assets typically are. Um, but compared to liabilities, those are just obligations of the company that it owes to external parties and the shareholders' equity is basically the residual interest in the uh, assets of the company after deducting all the liabilities. So let's break down the assets. So we basically have two big blocks in assets, um, the current assets and the non-current assets. And the current assets, uh, those are the ones that are expected to be converted into cash or used up within one year. And of course, this includes cash, uh, accounts receivable, which is money owed to a business for some uh, good or service, <clears throat> and inventory. The non-current assets, on the other hand, they are long-term investments, um, in particular, plant and uh, property plant and uh, equipment is in this category um, because they are not expected to be liquidated in the short term. And non-current assets also include intangible assets, which are non-physical assets such as patents, brands, trademarks, or copyrights, for instance. Now let's look at the liabilities. Here you have a similar breakdown. So you have current liabilities and non-current liabilities. The current liabilities um, comprise of debt or obligations due within uh, a year, a short term, and it is, includes accounts payable and short term loans, for instance, a short term debt. The non current liabilities, on the other hand, they include long term debt and obligations that are uh, due beyond one year. Um, hence, they also include deferred taxes. So now let's break down the last category. Equity uh, is typically uh, contains the first two components, retained earnings, which are accumulated profits that have been reinvested in the business rather than distributed to shareholders' dividends. And the second big block uh, is typically common stock. So that's the capital contributed uh, by shareholders or the book value of this capital. <clears throat> Some companies also have the third category, uh, preferred stock. That's 
uh, just a different type of equity that represents ownership in the company and the right to claim income from the company's operations. But uh, these preferred stocks have limited voting rights. So these are the main categories of uh, the balance sheet components. In practice, of course, things are much more detailed and more complicated. So this is an example from a filing from uh, Microsoft uh, in uh, for the year 2023. I'm not going into details for the individual roles. Uh, you can check them out uh, on your own, but you can see that uh, when you when you look at it, for the details, you see that there are these the assets, the liabilities, and the stockholders equity, and the higher level categories that we have just uh, discussed. Another part. Uh, no, first let's look. Let's download this uh, balance sheet uh, data, and there are different ways out there, definitely to 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 download uh, uh, financial uh, information. Um, in particular, you could go to the website of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, and look at the filings yourself. So this provides an interface to search for individual filings and download them. Um, but we found that um, the financial modeling prep or short FMP API provides a very convenient interface to download this information. In particular, they also have a free tier uh, that allows you to send out 250 calls to the API per day, and you can download five years of historical fundamental data. So if you want to play around with financial uh, data, uh, this is a very useful source. But let me tell you, we are not affiliated with this company uh, at all. It's just for playing around with the data. We find it uh, very convenient. We also started to create our own early stage R package uh, under the tiny finance uh, domain just to play around with it. Um, there is also another R package you can use, of course, um, uh, to, to fetch the information. Uh, but if you want to play around with other with our package and make suggestions for improvement, you can install it um, using the code that we provide here. So let's assume we go with the uh, FMP API package that we provide. We have the get balance sheet uh, balance sheet statements um, function in there. You can provide a ticker. MSFT is the uh, ticker for Microsoft. You can choose a period because it can download annual or quarterly information and the limit parameter um, just tells you how many um, years that you or quarters that you can fetch. So to fetch five years of historical uh, balance sheet information for Microsoft, uh, you can use this call and you can see that this returns a table with quite a lot of columns. So there are five rows and uh, 55 uh, for uh, columns in this data set. A couple of identifying information, but also note that you have uh, stuff like cash and cash equivalents or uh, net receivables, total current assets, property plan and equipment, um, long-term investments, intangible assets, so all the kinds of things that you also find in the actual balance sheets. Uh, in nice uh, with nice column names but financial statements not only contain balance sheet information there is other information in there in particular and uh, there are also income statements income statements show a company's financial performance over a specific period again can be quarterly or annual and breaks down revenue costs and profits basically so usually at the top, you start with the revenues or sales, it's the total income generated from goods or services sold. And then you subtract first the costs of goods sold, uh, short uh, COX. These are the direct costs associated with producing the goods uh, or services, for instance, raw materials or uh, labor. And then you arrive at the gross profit. So that's revenue minus COX and shows the basic profitability from, from the core operations of the company. Then you usually deduct the operating expenses. So these are the costs related to uh, regular uh, business operations, like uh, salaries, rent, and marketing. 
and you arrive at the operating income or also called EBIT, the earnings before interest and taxes. And this is also a very common measure for the profitability of a company from uh, corporations before you subtract any financing or tax costs. And if you in subtract interests and taxes, then you arrive at the net income, which is basically the bottom line. So the total profit after all expenses, taxes and uh, interests are subtracted from revenue. So the income statement thus provides a view into the profitability and operational uh, efficiency uh, of the company and how it manages cost. So this is something that we will pick up later when we calculate uh, financial ratios. But first, let's look, look at the example of Microsoft again. And so this is a screenshot of the SEC filing of Microsoft for the year 2023. Um, again, you can check out the details later, but uh, rest assured that you have the basically the same components. So you have revenue on the top, then the cost of revenue, and um, eventually you arrive at the, the net income uh, at the end. And we can download this income statements data in a very similar fashion. Instead of the get balance sheet statements function, you can use the get income statements function uh, with the same input parameters. So using Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft symbol, the uh, annual period and, and the last five years. And what we get now is a table with 38 uh, columns. So uh, here we have of course, revenue, the cost of revenue, uh, gross profit, and all those kind of expenses that you can uh, that you find in the file uh, in the filing. Now, the third part of the of the financial statements uh, is the cash flow statements. So, arguably, this is not this is rarely used um, for uh, calculating financial ratios, but nonetheless, it's, it's the third very big part of uh, the this uh, financial statements we also want to provide details uh, for this um and in particular so so, so you can look at cash flow statements um, if you want to see details about the flow of cash in and out of the business during a period categorized into operating financing and investment activities um, and you can also see whether the company is able to generate cash uh, to fund these operations and growth. So let's break it down on the top operating activities. These, uh, this is cash generated from a company's core business activities. Um, so these are things that we also had uh, already before. So the sale of uh, goods and services. Um, cash flows to suppliers and employees, interest and tax payments, and the change uh, in working capital. So this also includes uh, depreciation, for instance. The second block, financing activities. This includes cash flows related to borrowing and repaying debt, um, or issuing uh, equity, paying dividends, or, for instance, also stock buybacks. They are in the cash flow statement. So you see that some of these things are already uh, included, uh, for instance, in the in the income statement. That's just a different view of some uh, to, to to some of those uh, items. And last but not least, investing activities. So this is cash spent on or um, received from long-term investments, such as uh, purchasing and selling property equipment, uh, plant equipment or securities. So you have capital expansion, expenditure, uh, yeah, the sale of fixed assets uh, or purchase and sale of uh, investments. So if you're interested in the company's ability to generate cash uh, for, for operations and uh, growth, you can check out the cash flow statement. And for completeness here, the is an example cash flow statement of Microsoft for 2023. Uh, again, we will not really use this um, in uh, to calculate many financial ratios, 
But of course, you can also download uh, the cash flow statements data using the same approach as before. Use the get cash flow statements function from our package and then just plug in um, the symbol, the period again, and the limit, how many uh, data points you want to retrieve. And here we get 40 uh, columns. Um, and some of those things are overlapping with uh, the income statement. Now let's, so we've discussed the basics. Now let's look at a couple of financial ratios. So because we want to do uh, also a comparison across companies, we download first um, the financial statements for a couple of companies. And what we do is, as in the webinars before, we focus on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So we use, I use the tidyverse package for uh, manipulation and we use the tidy finance package to download the data. So we use the download data constituents function to get the symbols for the 30 stocks that are in the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. And then we um, want to download balance or these three different types of um, income statement information, balance sheet, uh, income statement, and the cash flow statements. And we use uh, we just map to map these functions across symbols and then uh, fetch uh, the individual, uh, fetch five years of information for the individual constituents. All right, so then we have a list of um, financial statement information for these uh, 30 companies for five years. Let's start with the first type of uh, financial ratio. These are the liquidity ratios. Um, there are, so for all of the ratios that I will show you today, there are of course, variants and uh, uh, more, uh, for each category, there are more variants out there. Um, we focus on the three for each category that we believe are most commonly used. And for the liquidity ratio, um, we picked um, the current ratio, the quick ratio, and the cash ratio. And in particular, the current ratio is the share of the current assets to total assets. So remember, the current assets are short-term uh, um, uh, assets. And if a ratio above one indicates that the company has uh, more current assets uh, than than, uh, uh, than the total assets, and it um, suggests that it's, it's a lot of liquidity on its uh, asset side. The quick ratio, it measures the company's ability to uh, meet its short-term obligations without relying on um, the sale of inventory. So it's, this, it's the difference between current assets and liabilities and it's divided by uh, the current liabilities. And the cash ratio, uh, the third part, it measures the company's ability to pay off its short-term uh, uh, liabilities with its cash and cash equivalents. And of course, uh, if, if the ratio is, is, is high or is one, it indicates there's a long, a very strong a liquid position. We can use the balance sheet information that we've downloaded um, to calculate these three ratios. The wording is very similar. So um, we will look at these ratios in particular for, for uh, selected symbols. So we pick these three uh, um, we will focus for most of the comparisons on, on uh, Microsoft, Apple, and Amazon. So the three big tech companies that are in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, otherwise it becomes uh, too much uh, to look at. And for, for each of these company, we can calculate yeah, the current ratio as the share of the total current assets to total assets. It's same wording. So it's just the column names that come from the um, FMP API, same for the uh, quick ratio, um, and as well for the cash ratio. So we can just divide cash and cash equivalents by total current liabilities. And we think this is very convenient 
uh, to have a very direct mapping between column names and uh, the entities uh, that we need for calculating ratios. And the last variable that we also create here is, is we, we used this is just a, a helper for uh, plotting, as you will see uh, uh, later, uh, create a label variable, which just uses the symbol for these three selected stocks and a missing value for all other stocks. It just facilitates highlighting the, the three stocks that we want to highlight. Now let's compare uh, liquidity ratios. Um, Let's focus on a single year for now. So pick 2023, because the last year, this is the last year for which um, the balance sheet information is available for these three companies. Um, and we only focus on the selected companies. So what I will uh, plot now is um, the on the x-axis, you will see the value of the ratio on the y-axis, we have the different um, liquidity ratios. So on the top, you have the quick ratio, then you have the current ratio, and at the bottom, you have the cash ratio. And you also see uh, the three selected companies. And for instance, we can see um, that Microsoft has uh, a higher no, Microsoft has the highest current ratio um, compared to the other two, but it has a lower cash ratio than Amazon. Um, so what does this mean now? Um, it really depends. So it, which company has a better liquidity ratio? It really depends on what you are looking at. So uh, it's really sensitive. Uh, so th th the answer to this question is really sensitive to which uh, ratio you pick. So this is why it makes sense to usually look at different ratios for the same category uh, to get a fuller picture. For instance, the quick ratio is, is much higher in Microsoft compared to, to uh, Amazon uh, and Apple. Um, so what this example should just highlight that it makes sense to look at different um, ratios um, because the ranking the relative position of each company depend, might really depend on the ratio type. Okay, let's uh, look at another other uh, financial ratio category. These are leverage ratios. So typically, you focus on debt to equity, just as the measures the proportion of debt financing relative to equity financing. So a higher ratio indicates more leverage and potentially higher financial risk. Similarly, you can look at debt to assets. Um, so how well, the share of a company's assets that are financed uh, by debt. Also higher share, uh, higher ratio, such as small leverage. The third part that we want to highlight is interest coverage, because this assesses a company's ability to pay interest on its debt. And also higher ratio indicates better capability to meet interest uh, obligations. So you have the share of uh, EBIT to the interest expense. To calculate this, the first two, we can use the balance sheet information because debt and equity are recorded there. So debt to equity is just total debt to total equity and debt to assets, uh, just analogously. But for the interest coverage, we have to go to the income statements because this is the place where operating income and interest uh, expense are uh, to be found. Now let's look at uh, debt to assets over time. As an example, uh, for leverage, um, and you can see here that this, the companies have very different dynamics actually. So for Microsoft, the blue line, you see that this the debt to asset ratio steadily declined over the last five years, while for Amazon it stayed roughly the same, and for Apple, it uh, temporarily increased, but now it's it's the level that it was uh, five years before. So again, so what do we learn from this? Uh, it depends on the kind of question that you're asking, but it's very interesting to see that these three companies, for various reasons, I, I think we could investigate uh, a long time each individual company to find out, okay, wh why did this uh, ratio change 
uh, in this specific dynamic for this company. But you can also look at the debt to asset ratio in the cross section. So before we had we had just highlighted these three companies, but let's now pick again the year 2023. And now let's plot um, the debt to asset ratio for all the symbols of the Dow Jones. So we can really check, figure out the relative position uh, of, of the, these three companies. And this is the plot that you get. So in the y-axis, you have all these symbols ranked by the debt to asset ratio. So on the top, you have higher leverage companies and on the bottom, you have lower leverage companies. And you see that Microsoft seems to be in the lower part uh, of this distribution, but none of these companies is really among the higher uh, companies with the, with the highest leverage, at least to the debt, according to the debt to asset um, ratio. Of course, we could do the same for the debt to equity ratio and uh, figure out, okay, um the, how does how does uh, the picture change here but if you want to look at uh, different measures at the same time then of course we can look at uh, a scatter plot so again we pick the calendar year 2023 but now um we combine the income statements with the balance sheet information because we want to plot on the x-axis the debt to asset ratio as before, but on the y-axis now we use the interest coverage. So you can see whether there's a relationship, or how strong this relationship is between these different um, measures for leverage. And you can see that the interest coverage tends to be higher uh, for some companies. Um, as the debt to asset ratio is lower. But then again, it uh, seems not to be like a super strong uh, relationship, uh, at least among the Dow Jones industrial average constituents. I guess it would be a fun exercise to repeat the same picture or um, the S&P 500 or a lot more companies. So this is just another tool for you, how you can look at um, different uh, ratios at the same time. So let's move on to the uh, third category. So these are efficiency ratios, um, the three most common, uh, commonly used, as we believe, are first the asset turnover. So this measures how efficiently a company uses its uh, assets to generate revenue. And the higher ratio indicates more efficient use of assets. The second is the inventory turnover. It indicates how many times a company's inventory is sold and replaced over a period. And higher ratios suggest um, efficient inventory management. And the third is a receivables turnover. It measures how effectively a company collects uh, receivables from the, the uh, um, clients and uh, or, or customers, and the higher ratio indicates a uh, more efficient credit and uh, collection process. Here um, is the code to calculate these ratios. Now we have to um, also include the cash flow statements because they contain the uh, accounts receivable. So we start with the balance sheet statements, um, add income statements, and there's also some selection going on and not taking all the, the columns, but we have to also add cash flow statements, as I, as I mentioned. And then with these combined statements, we can calculate the asset turnover, um, inventory turnover, and the third part, um, the receivables turnover, which unfortunately you cannot see at the moment, um, but the code is there. Um, and as easy as that, you have these additional financial ratios. But for the sake of time, we are not going to look at, uh, we are not going to plot efficiency ratios um, right now because we want to uh, for, give more attention to the, um, in my opinion, one of the most important categories. Uh, so these are the profitability ratios the three most commonly used measures for uh, profitability are the gross margin, profit margin, and after tax, re uh, after tax return on equity. 
the first one, gross margin, it indicates the percentage of uh, revenue that exceeds the cost of goods uh, sold. So you have the gross profit divided by uh, the revenue. And of course, it means a higher gross margin uh, means that the company retains just a higher percentage of the revenue uh, as measured by gross profit. The profit margin is similar, but here we look at net income divided by revenue. And the after-tax uh, return on equity measures the return on the shareholders' equity after accounting for taxes. So this is why we instead of, so now we divide the net income by the total equity. And the higher return on equity indicates that the company is uh, effectively generating profit from the shareholders' uh, investment. So how do we calculate this? Uh, we can use the combined statements that we have created before and calculate the gross margin just as described above again, and the profit margin and the after-tax uh, ROE um, is also very similar. And again, I just want to stress that it's very convenient that the column names uh, from our data source come in such uh, in a way that we don't have to rename things and we can directly map those things to the financial ratios. Now let's look at the gross margins over time for our three selected stocks. And between 2019 and 2023, and again, we have Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. And you can see that at the top, uh, Microsoft consistently has a higher gross margin uh, compared to Apple and Amazon. So if you look at this measure, it means that uh, Microsoft is by far more profitable, for instance, than Amazon. But uh, there's another way how we can uh, look at this. So instead of just focusing on the gross margin, we uh, can also look at the gross margin and profit margin uh, simultaneously. So this is what we did before. Let's focus on a specific calendar year. Um, and on the x-axis, again, plot the gross margin, but now on the y-axis, we uh, add the profit margin. And um, because it might be that you know, a specific uh, profitability measure indicates that Microsoft is more profitable than the other two. Uh, but in fact, uh, this shows that even if you look at the profit margin and the gross margin, so in both dimensions, Microsoft, at least for the year 2023, is more profitable than Apple uh, and Amazon. And in fact, if you look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a Amazon seems to be in the lower bottom, uh, in the lower part of uh, 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 the profitability according to the gross margin, but also not too far away if you look at the profit margin. Okay, now we have a lot of different ratios and different categories, but I mean, how can we compare uh, companies uh, and evaluate co which company is better. One way to do this is to rank the companies in the different categories. And this is the code that we provide next. So again, let's focus on the calendar year 2023. Um, we select the different ratios that we have calculated and uh, assign the ratio type column. So we have the liquidity ratios, leverage ratios, efficiency ratios, and profitability ratios. And what we can then do is for each of those um, uh, ratio types and uh, ratios, we can order, uh, rank the companies uh, according to the value. And then uh, for each uh, stock and for each uh, ratio type, um, we can then create uh, calculate the average rank of the company. And then what we do is, uh, you'll see it in a sec, on the x-axis, we plot this average rank. And on the y-axis, we have the ratio uh, categories. So again, so we you see the top uh, row, the, profit, the average rank of our three selected companies um, 
in the profitability ratio category. So this means that Microsoft has a, a, a better rank than uh, Apple and Amazon in all, on average in all three categories. Second row refers to liquidity ratios. And here you see that if we calculate these three different liquidity ratios, Microsoft has a better position um, than Amazon and Apple in these uh, 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 three, uh, across these three uh, liquidity measures. For leverage, Microsoft has a, a higher rank. So this means it has lower leverage according, if we look at these three measures and for the efficiency ratios, uh, Microsoft seems to be in the middle. But this picture to me suggests if we look at different types of uh, financial ratios, uh, Microsoft seems to provide uh, a, a healthier has to seems to have a healthier position, uh, better financial health than uh, the other two companies. Probably efficiency ratios are not uh, that relevant for company for these tech companies as Microsoft, Amazon, Apple. So I wouldn't worry uh, uh, too much. But then again, what you want to find out, what you want to discover, really depends on the type of question you are asking. I just wanted to compare these three companies to each other and how they perform relative. Uh, to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now, I want to uh, briefly highlight um, that some form of financial ratio uh, are also used in uh, asset pricing, in particular the Pharma French um, uh, asset pricing model that um, I have mentioned in the last webinar. Um, also inc incorporates specific financial ratios. So um, the Pharma French Five Factor model has these four firm specific uh, uh, um, measures. So you have the, the a size measure, which is typically the the uh, logarithm of a company's market capitalization. Uh, the second. Thing is the book to market ratio. So you take the market capitalization and divide it by the book equity. So remember book equity is something that we get from balance sheet statements, but market uh, capitalization, this is something that we, we uh, have to get from, um, depends on stock market information on the prices that uh, are quoted. The third uh, measure, uh, which is really purely based on um, Financial statement information is uh, profitability or more specifically operating profitability. So as Farm and French calculated, it is the ratio of uh, the operating profit uh, divided by book equity. So they take the revenue, uh, subtract the cost of goods sold. They also subtract selling general administrative expenses and then interest expenses. Um, and the last measure that Farmer uh, uh, and French calculate this investment. So they take the total assets that we've also used before, divided by the lagged total assets uh, minus one. So they don't really use something from the cash flow income statement. They yeah. uh, use assets to calculate investment. <coughs> and this is, it aims to reflect the company's uh, growth uh, strategy and whether it indicates aggressively or conservatively. And of course we could calculate these uh, measures uh, also using the, the uh, FMP API. So for this, we have to get market cap historical function and you can use from and to date. So we want to have a specific date. We just take the end of uh, 2023. We add this to our uh, combined statements. Um, and we also add the lagged assets because we want to calculate the investment according to Pharma and French. And then we can uh, calculate these factors. And again, I have to apologize that you didn't see the full code here. I will make sure that this is visible once I upload the slides. But you can calculate these, these measures for each stock and also for different uh, time periods. But if we want to pick up uh, the theme that we have uh, used before, we can also rank these three uh, companies according to these uh, pharma French variables and 
see how um, they they position to each other uh, um, according to farm in French. And here's very interesting. So the size is not surprising. Those those three are the, the among the biggest companies in um, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But now, interestingly, Apple shows uh, the highest profitability. Uh, so it has the, the best rank uh, according to uh, the Pharma and French. But according, also according to Pharma and French, Apple shows the lowest uh, investment uh, measure as they uh, calculate it. Okay, so the bottom line is also this is just a tool how you can visualize um, also things, uh, uh, measures that are calculated in the context uh, of asset pricing. And I think it's it's interesting to understand how the stocks that you select that do you care about um, are positioned uh, in uh, using different uh, measures to compare them. Okay, so with this, I know it's a lot a uh, lot of uh, talking about uh, measures and financial statements and no clear answers. But the idea of this webinar is to give you some uh, some. Uh, tools, how you can play around with financial statements and financial ratios yourself. So let's finish with a quick recap. Um, first, so what you should take away is that financial statements provide a standardized and also legally required uh, way uh, to inspect uh, a view into a company's uh, financial positions. The second uh important takeaway is that these ratios can be used for uh, benchmarking so comparing companies to each other and also looking at trends how they evolve over time and there are different categories that you can look at so if you're interested about the liquidity of a company the leverage of a company the efficiency or the profitability for each of these dimensions there are different ways uh, to measure uh, uh to measure them and thirdly, we think that this FMP API uh, provides a very convenient, easy access to structured and cleaned uh, financial data. And you can very quickly from downloading the data, uh, start calculating ratios and um, do peer comparisons. So with this, uh, I conclude. Thank you for your attention. And I just want to mention that in the next webinar, we will somewhat build on uh, the financial statements because we'll talk about company valuation using discounted cash flow analysis. And then we will pick up a couple of topics that uh, we have discussed today. Okay. Are there any questions? We have time to discuss them. Maybe I just, so I want to mention in the first two webinars, right, we talked about returns and it's easier to get a longer uh, time horizon uh, of of uh, return data and also very granular and for a lot of stocks it's, it's, you can get that very easily um, for these firm fundamentals it's typically uh, harder to do that if you don't have access to um, these huge data sets um, so one thing that we use in our tidy finance book textbook for instance is um CompuStat financial information, so to provide uh, a couple of uh, decades of uh, financial information um, for US companies, you can download them very easily, but you need access to that. So, because we want to um, enable everybody to access the data that we're using in these webinars, we decided to look for an alternative to this CompuStat data and decided to go for the FMP API because to download these few data points that we have uh, shown you here, uh, you don't have to pay for a subscription or anything. It's very, it's very uh, easy.
Okay. I don't see any questions, Christoph. Um, is there okay if we can go ahead and end the webinar here? Okay, Unless you want to fine. come on. Fine for me. So then maybe it's just want to say thank you to everybody for uh, attending and hopefully see you next time when we talk about company valuation. Bye, everyone. All right, bye.